Hello fantastic creatures, I'm Fantasims and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to show you how I created this DIY build your own castle kit with pre-made wall pieces I created for you without custom content. First I'll show you a speed build of how I constructed these pieces and then I'll do a quick tutorial on how to use them with an example of the kinds of castles you can build. Alright, so the arches I'm using here are actually debug arches from the get together pack that were unlocked through Arnie's world edit mod and I have them available as a room in my gallery so you can download them and use them in your builds. And I thought they would work perfectly as the kind of arch trim you can see around the top of castle walls, but they don't flow nicely into the wall so I then had to figure out how to shape objects around it to hide the gaps and help the arches flow nicely into the walls and ceiling. And that's pretty much how I constructed all the pieces for this kit. So the thing that made this build so fun were the colour combinations because get together, vampire and romantic garden packs all have this powder blue stone swatch that I've never used but I just love the colour and even though a big complaint amongst builders is the lack of swatches matching across different packs the stone swatches are quite good and these ones matched so well however the debug arches have a bit of a pinky purple taupe tone to them and so I was able to tie that colour in with the fancy coffin from vampires because it also has a similar taupe grey tone to it You'll see how I use the ornate coffins in a minute. And that combination of the warm taupe with the cool powdery blue stone just really appealed to me. And it's a really different colour combination that I've never used before. So at first I was just playing around with creating a tower for a possible castle build. But then after the reaction I got on Twitter about how people would love to build a castle with this tower I was crafting, I got this idea to start a series of my own DIY kits where you can mix and match architectural details that I have created for you and put them together to build your own castle. One of the most exciting things for me is to do things that are useful and helpful for you guys, especially since many of you get bummed out that you don't have the time, patience, or maybe you struggle to use the tool mod. And so I thought I'd make your life easier and hopefully more fun with these pre-made detailed pieces you can rearrange yourself. So it feels like you're building something epic without having to spend days and days to do it. You are welcome, my fantastic creatures you are welcome. <laughs> My goal is to make a bunch of these kits so that over time we will all have a ton of architectural details to choose from when we build. Okay, so you just saw me rotating the coffins to construct a corner piece and this was by far the trickiest part of the construction for two reasons. First, I wanted to create a more 3D shape by curving the column out and upwards at the top. So I had to curve the coffins and then rotate them around to make a smooth shape. And since the coffins are rectangles, they made a bit of a jagged edge on the inside curve. So I then had to come up with a way to hide that with objects. And second, I didn't realize until I I was done constructing all these pieces that the coffins are so highly detailed that when you use a ton of them on a lot it starts to make the game lag unless you have a high powered newer computer and I have a nine-year-old iMac that I've made faster by adding RAM cards and switching over to a solid state drive instead of a regular hard drive and it's a quad core processor so even though it's old I can handle a lot more than most laptop users can but she's starting to show her age and she can't quite handle the level of details I like to add sometimes so I realized that if I was going to make this a kit, I'd have to come up with a way for slower computers to handle all of these detailed pieces. So later on I created simpler versions of these wall sections that use less coffins so that you can use more of them. I mean, slow computers might still struggle with the simpler versions I made, but most computers should be able to handle them. Well, in theory, I haven't actually practiced. <laughs> so I learned a lot from constructing this kit about how to do it better for the next one, but I think I did pretty well considering it's the first one I've ever made. And another challenge was crafting the wall pieces in a way that hides objects poking out. So I had to make sure that everything fit within the grid line so that these wall sections look like a finished product when they stand alone. Whereas if I were just building the castle as one whole thing, it wouldn't really matter if objects stuck out over the grid lines because 
I could just hide it with other objects. I don't know if that made sense, but basically I just had to be way more precise. So I struggled for a couple days off camera to really tweak all the pieces so that it can be used as standalone objects to build with. So for example, this tower blends together well because I constructed it as one unit, but when I pulled the individual wall pieces apart to make standalone wall sections, the edges of the wall had ugly jagged parts of the objects poking out. So I had to do a lot of tweaking and problem solving to make them look smooth and professional. Anyway, so this tower is more decorative than functional because the room inside is small and if you collapse the walls, there's still a ton of objects blocking your view unless you do more of a bird's eye perspective. But you could fit something like a desk and a computer or a little reading nook inside if you like with a ladder to access it. But I just really wanted to make something that had a 3D shape to it. So I created those little curved nooks inside the arches because it helps the build to cast more shadows and the more shadows a building creates the more 3D and interesting it is to look at especially since The Sims lighting tends to have a washed out and flat feel to it, so buildings can often look really boxy and boring unless you use something like reshade or lighting mods to improve the colour and shadows in the game. So if you don't use mods and programs like that, the best way to add depth is to create really 3D architectural details that stick out from different angles so you get more shadows outlining your build. I did use a few objects from Journey to Batu and Cats and Dogs and paranormal stuff pack to add decoration to the top of the curved columns but the build mostly uses get together vampires and romantic garden so those are the three you really need and if you don't own the others, you could always find some decorative objects to place on the top of the column and wall sections yourself so you can still use these pieces. Something important to keep in mind as well is that because the arches lining the top of the wall are debug objects, you can't just copy and paste the room because those arches can't be duplicated even if you do have the better build by mod installed which usually allows debug objects to be duplicated as these debug arches are not part of the game menu but unlocked only through Arnie's World Edit mod like I mentioned before. But don't worry, you don't need any mods to download these walls and towers that I made. So in order to duplicate them, you will need to place them from the library. Although if you hold down the shift key while placing the room from the library, you can duplicate the rooms as many as you want and they will all have the arches in them. Anyway, so in the last few minutes remaining of the speed build section of the video, I just show snippets of me customizing the wall sections from the original tower I made and I didn't record every single variation that I made because I basically used the same objects, I just tweaked them a little to have slightly different details. That way you can have some variety but they will all still match. But I do show you the construction of this wall section because I wanted you to see how I like to use the backs of furniture to create architectural details like using this grandfather clock from Vampires because it has the perfect taupe tone to it like the arches and the columns. I just placed one facing forwards and one backwards slightly smaller with tool mod to hide the clock face because I love the carved wood detailing in the vampire's furniture so much for constructing castles like this. I also layered the vampire windows on top of each other because the art shapes of the stone are so cool but it did create an ugly mess on the inside of the wall so I then covered it with a wall tapestry to hide it and that's basically what happens in everything that I build. I make an ugly mess by layering things on top of each other and then I have to find a way to hide those ugly parts but we get there in the end and that's what counts. The final look is worth the struggle to find ways to hide the mess I make and then here I'm just making some of the variations of the same wall section and I loved how the hanging macrame fringe thing from paranormal stuff pack looks as a fancy decoration for the castle. It makes it feel more magical and fantasy but you can always delete these embellishments if they're not the look you're going for in your castle build. Now I had the idea to make roof toppers for all the different shaped towers that you can construct with these wall pieces but to be honest I was just too tired by the time I created this kit. So I ended up only making this decorative flat roofing for the two tile square tower. Sorry guys, I just reached my limit and I had to stop because I have a million other projects I need to finish. So you'll have to create your own roofing for the rounded towers or just use regular game roofing. I hope you don't mind and if you do, too bad. <laughs> 
<laughs> I've been forcing myself to learn to stop when I've had enough so that I don't get stressed and miserable because as a perfectionist I tend to push myself too far and then I end up exhausted but I figured the kit has enough detailed objects for it to still be cool even if I could have done more to make it a complete kit so as you can see here I use rotated tables and the backs of vampire benches to construct the architectural shapes couches chairs tables and cabinets are some of the best objects to use for castle details and if you use tool mod practice flipping them upside down or to the side or just simply use the back of the objects without the tool mod to see what shapes you can create it's so fun and you can come up with the coolest designs with them I also love the shape of these wall sconces from vampires I wish there was just a wall decoration version without candles poking out because the gothic design is so cool for castles since the objects were all the taupe color I did have to include some of the powder blue stone so that it matched the rest of the build and tied all the colors together and since we don't have a lot of rounded column shaped objects I resorted to using trash cans which are very effective for tower shapes and then I just slapped on a bunch of roofing decorations to fill in the gaps and add a bit more detail to the shape and use the base game treasure chest box to hide the window because I figured it didn't really make sense to have a window in a roof that has absolutely no room <laughs> so get together is actually one of the best packs for roofing decorations as well as strangerville and island living I'm really surprised that so few packs offer roofing decorations because they make a huge difference especially considering that the roofing is so flat looking in the game because the tiles are just painted on rather than being 3d I'm just not a fan of the game roofing which is why I always try to create my own roofing even though it takes four Ever. Now creating three tile and one tile wide versions of the wall se seemed simple enough until I realized they were off center so I had to rearrange all the pieces it was all that kind of tweaking that took up a couple days to fix everything everything always seems like it will be easy peasy and then you run into little nuisances like that that take forever to fix that's when I have to keep telling myself that the end result will be worth it and I was determined not to abandon the project that's a huge problem for me I literally have over a hundred unfinished builds in my library because I run across a snag or come to the point where I have to decorate the inside of the build and I just get put off so easy so I abandon the project and start something new and I don't know why but starting projects is so relaxing but finishing is so stressful are any of you like that I can't tell how much of it it's my ADD or just something we all struggle with anyway I think the journey to Batu decoration that blue blue sphere thing I can't remember the name it really ties this build together nicely and I don't understand why that pack gets so much hate I mean obviously the build items are some of the most detailed we have in the game so that's incredible and I guess I can understand people not liking the gameplay but I don't think it's worse than Strangerville although a lot of people don't like that pack either so <laughs> or even Snowy Escape that's supposed to be an expansion pack but I got really bored with the gameplay quickly for that one but that's just my opinion I mean I'm always drawn more to fantasy gameplay so my thoughts probably don't re represent the majority anyway oh well I really like the pack on another note these curved wall things I can't remember what they are well if you turn them sideways they make really beautiful looking arch designs for your buildings and you don't have to use tool mod to place them you just have to temporarily delete the walls but I did use tool mod because it was quicker and I could pull them out to the desired position a lot easier than alt placing oh and you might have noticed I'm using tool mod in live mode rather than build mode from the new update and that's because I built this before the update came out and a lot of my future speed builds will be like that because I have a million unfinished projects like I said I literally have over one terabyte of speed build footage from unfinished projects on two separate hard drives but I'm determined to finish them so I can have more videos on my channel for you guys okay my friends so here we have the full collection it kind of looks like a huge army of walls <laughs> and as you can see I've grouped them into sections because in the gallery I didn't want to post every single wall section differently so I have them grouped together so for example I've got all the three tiled wide doors here and what I've done is this is the version that has all of the coffins so it's going to be a lot more heavy on your game and then this is the simplified version that I mentioned I didn't show myself building this one because I basically
basically just deleted all the bottom parts of the coffin so that there's a lot less of them. I kept this curve because I did try with other objects to create this same shape and the, just the colors and the shape of it just didn't look right. And then here's the collection of straight walls and these are two tile wide and then I included a one tile wide so that you can come up with all kinds of different variations of shape. And then we have all of the diagonal walls. I also created a collection of plain walls that you can add your own windows and details to if you want to. And most of these are the same. Some of them do have a slight difference. Like these ones are all identical in terms of how I decorated the top portion of them. But I think more so on the straight walls, there are some variations. Like see here, we've got this decorative piece popping out. And then we've got this top part looking like this right here. But then on this one, I used these Journey to Batu orbs and then a tilted bench. So there are some slight differences, but most of them are pretty much identical. So you don't have to use all of these. I just wanted to show you the different kinds of things you could do either with an archway or with windows, with smaller windows. And then I used these posters from Discover University matched with this macrame hanging fringe from Paranormal Stuff Pack just to act like it's the emblem of the castle. But you can delete those details if you want to come up with your own design. And then I did create a few tower options. I was going to create a bunch of towers, but you know what? I'd end up with so many rooms in the gallery. I figured the whole point of this kit is for me to provide you with these little wall sections and then you can come up with your own design. So now let's look at how we're actually going to use them. Okay, so in the gallery, they're going to be in strips like this instead of the individual room pieces, but it's super easy. You just draw a wall separating them and then you can just move that piece. Now, if you want to, you can always save these individual sections as rooms in your library. And the only reason I didn't do them as individual rooms like this, um, like I said before, they'd be too many to upload to the gallery, but also because it kind of cuts off the top of it so you can't really tell what it looks like entirely. But if you want to upload it to your own library like this for it to be easier for you to then place them individually rather than the entire strip, then you can do that. And then if I want to create my own tower, it is a little tricky because, okay, so if I take the straight wall piece and I put it right up next to the angled one, it's going to overlap those columns. It's also going to delete part of the wall, so you will have to redraw that part of the wall, but that should be fine. Let's just delete these. And then look, you can just redraw that part of the wall. And then with the eyedropper tool, you can just duplicate that wall texture or choose a different wall texture, whatever one you prefer. But now we've doubled up all of these objects and that is just excessive. That's going to slow your computer down unnecessarily. So my recommendation for if you're going to make a tower with these is you're going to have to delete the sides of some of them. So for example, as you can see here, I've got these two diagonals and I need to put a straight wall here to create the side of the tower, but we've already got the columns we need on either side. So we don't need these columns on these side. So you're going to, if you want to create your own custom towers, you are going to have to delete all of these pieces. And I know that's inconvenient, but you can save it. You can delete all the pieces for the columns, including these side pieces. You're not going to need those and then place it without these pieces between them. And then that will work. And I was originally going to have all of these available without the side columns on them. But again, it's going to end up being a ton of rooms to the gallery. And then it's going to be confusing because people aren't going to know how to use them if they haven't seen this video. So in future kits, I'm going to make them a lot easier to use. Like I said, in the speed build, I learned a lot through creating these of what not to do next time. But something that might actually be easier is to use these simple ones because there's going to be less items for you to delete. Okay, so here we have the simplified version of the same one and see how there's a lot less objects. So it would be much easier for you to just delete these ones. And you want to delete all of these, including the decoration on the top. Delete all of these coffins that you're not going to need. Delete all of these. Delete these side pieces, these side rotated benches, because they're only there to cap off the sides for what I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so here it is without any of the pieces. And I would recommend um, that you save it as a room to your library so that next time you want to use the same piece, you don't have to delete all the items again. And then you're just going to move it right between those side walls. And then there you go. Again, just redraw that wall back in that was deleted because of the flooring and then recolor it and then there you have part of your tower and what you can even do is save this as a room to your library and then place it to put on the other side and do that another time however many times you need to to create your tower shape something to note if you didn't watch the speed build portion just to reiterate these arches are debug objects that were unlocked only through arnie's world edit mod you don't need the mod for them to work in your own game but it means that even if you have the organized debug mod from twisted mexi you're still not going to be able to just copy and paste the room so like if i tried to copy this and then paste it alongside it, everything else will show up except for those arches, as you can see here. So you do have to place them from the library, but when you place it from the library, if you hold down the shift key, so I'm holding down the shift key, clicking on it, you can place another version of that room and you can hold down the shift key as many times as you want and it'll have the arches on them. Now, unlike the rounded towers, when you're making a square tower, you don't need to delete anything. And here's why. If I place one off to the side like this, you're not 
not going to need to delete anything because they're positioned in slightly different areas like this, so you actually need the columns on both sides to make a square tower. So it's only if you're trying to create these rounded towers that you're going to need to delete the columns on either side. And that's because, like I mentioned in the speed build before, originally I had just created this tower just to use in a castle, and then I realized that it might work really well as a kit, so the design of it was originally intended for towers, not for straight walls or square walls, but I tried to adapt it so that we could use it that way. And then because of that same reason, there's another design flaw. I know, I'm really selling it, guys. <laughs> I'd make a terrible salesperson. I'm, I'm showing you guys all the things that are wrong with it. Anyway, uh, if you try and place them side by side with one another, they don't quite fit together perfectly. I mean, they do kind of work. You'll get this double column right here, which doesn't look that bad actually. And it works better if you're using the simplified version with, with these basic columns rather than these ones with the coffins that go all the way down. Again, if you're going to overlap them like that, all the coffins at the bottom will probably need to be deleted. I'm not quite sure. Let's test it out. Okay, so if we place the full column coffin column version right next to the other one. Yeah, see, they're overlapped and that's just an unnecessary amount of objects that's just going to cause your game to lag if you do this too often. So I would recommend deleting pretty much the portion of the column that is straight, like right here, before it starts to curve out. Instead, a faster or easier option could just be to put them one tile gap between them, like this, and then just draw a wall between the two. Because it's such a small amount of blank space that I actually don't think that looks bad. I mean, you're not going to have the same trim running along the whole thing, but it's such a small area that I think that looks pretty good. It depends on what you prefer. There's one other design flaw, and that is that the inverted corners, so a corner like this is gonna kind of clash with all the objects. Let's see if we can get a better angle. Yeah, if I try and place these rooms together to make that inverted corner piece, the columns are just gonna clash in with each other, like they're gonna poke through the inside of the interior of the build. So what you could do is just delete the these columns on the inside corner and maybe delete some of the these excess objects like these side pieces like that and then you can kind of create an in the inverted section although some of the pieces do kind of poke through to the wall I mean you can always cover that part with a decoration inside or just delete these top pieces if you don't want them it's not too bad though if you delete those columns you can still get that inverted look into the corners but like I said I've learned how I can do it better for the next time and then this last part is I just made this little tower topper for the square tower so you can just put that on the second floor or whatever floor it is and it creates this completed tower with a very ornate decorative top. All right, now let's get into an actual castle build with these pieces. Okay, friends, so slight change of plan. So originally I had these ones as the simplified version, but when I started to create rooms out of them, even though these columns have been pulled out, they still acted funky and started rearranging and changing. And I just didn't want to put out a kit if the pieces were doing funky stuff like that. So I spent an extra day creating two other simplified versions instead because I wanted it to fit with the original packs that I had used for the build. And so I ended up using this sundial upside down, these trash cans, and then a blue version of the sundial and created these columns. But if that look is a bit too chunky for your taste, I've also made this version where it just uses one simple game column and then the blue sundial is on the top, but you can always change the swatches to the taupe version if you want. And I'll have some options where we've got some customized towers, like pre-made towers. You can also create your own. And these use a lot less coffins, just like the original simplified version that didn't work. Hopefully that will be less taxing on your computer. So as per usual, I created an excessively huge lot like I normally do. But as you can see, like look at how it's just jumping around and lagging. Ever since the we had a couple of updates yesterday and today, the 27th and the 28th, and now it's lagging even more. So I don't know what's happening with these updates. But anyway, I didn't finish it. I was going to see. Oh my gosh, look at that jumping. It's driving me crazy. I was going to add some more of these rocks all around it and kind of maybe post this as a furnish me challenge because on Twitter I asked you guys if you'd be interested in finishing some builds that I don't have time to finish and also because some of you requested that I post this as a shell challenge and so I was gonna post it like this decorated and you can just furnish the inside but I don't know with this amount of lag I'm not able to finish it so let me know if you still want me to post it uh, and you guys can finish decorating the outside and the inside and I'll also post it as just the shell so you can decorate it however you want but as you can see it is lagging like crazy and I didn't
couldn't do anything to the back because it was just too much. But anyway, besides the crazy lagging problem, you can see how I've put those wall pieces together as custom towers in all different shapes and sizes with different details. I made sure to allow areas where there's just room for the build to breathe. So you don't have to use all these ornate details for every single area. I originally created them just to be like tower toppers, just to add that extra detail. And then you can have areas that are a lot more plain. It's nice to have that contrast between the really ornate areas and then the kind of more plain, simple areas. So this is just an example of what you could do with these kit pieces. All right, now let's try building a small castle. This is going to be my front entrance. And then I think I'm just going to use a one tile wide to put on the side of this. And I've chosen the second simplified style and then save this individual section to my library. Okay, so I'm just gonna save it. I'll just place two more. I don't know how many I'm gonna end up using. And I'm just gonna take one of these pieces and rotate it to the side with the comma or period key and put it right next to that corner. And there, I've created a custom corner. Now, these couple of pieces are poking through so I can actually delete those there. And then that makes a nice edge to it. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just take it and rotate it with the comma key, delete those excess pieces, perfect. And then that's going to be the front entrance of my castle. So then, like I mentioned before, if we draw a wall right here, this, all of this stuff right here is gonna be poking through to the inside of your build. All you have to do is just add an extra space like that. And then we can have the castle come out here, do the same on the other side. And it will allow enough of a gap that this doesn't cut into the wall. And I, th I think it still looks effective. Okay, now you can use my pre-made towers that I'll have posted, or you can create your own. So let's just try with a pre-made tower to see what it would look like. This particular one is a one by two tile. And so I'm going to have it stick out one tile on this side. Do one, two, one, two, all the way around. Okay, so we've got our tower. And downstairs, I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use it on the second floor. So I'm just gonna take the room, place it on top, delete the excess floor. And I forgot to mention, these are all tall wall heights. So I just put the second floor on, but it just shifted everything around because I made it tall. So what you're going to have to do, which I completely forgot to mention, is set your wall heights before you start placing everything. And what I like to do is just build several stories, however many stories I need for my build, like that, just off to the side. And that way it's not gonna shift anything around. So let's try this again. Okay, we're gonna move it on top. Yes, perfect. Now we've got the right wall height, delete the excess. And look at that in like a minute or two, you've already got the beginnings of a castle. I'm not gonna keep going just for the sake of the time of this video. Uh, one more thing that you can do with this kit is change the colors. So these coffins come in a bunch of different colors. You can even do a bright red one if you want to. I, I wouldn't recommend doing it after you've already created your tower. It's better to do it once you've only got a few pieces, then you can save it to your library and place those with the color changes. And you can go through and just come up with a different color scheme. Like this could be part of like a fiery kingdom if you want, make these gold. It almost has like a Chinese inspired look to it. And then change the color of the stone to be a different color if you want. This comes in different colors. I don't know if, if all of the different color swatches are gonna go together like the blue ones do, but you can essentially customize it however you want. Well, I hope you enjoy these kits that I created. Again, I'll be posting the castle as a shell challenge if you want to participate in that. I actually am almost finished with a Gothic cathedral kit, so that should be coming out shortly. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it an encouraging thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified about fresh content. I love you guys so freaking much.